been so, so good to me. Before I took a breath, you breathed your life in me. You have been so, so kind to me. Chases me down, fights till I'm found, leaves the 99. I couldn't earn, and I don't deserve Still you give yourself This is one of my favorite songs. I guess I have so many. <laughs> but I like to share songs on these videos because it's a reminder. It's just a reminder of God's goodness. It really is. So, the majority of the videos that I will ever create, that I will ever record, or that I will ever present to you will actually be, I would say, not limited, but will hyper-focus on faith, family, and life. Faith, family, and life. And so if you want to grow and mature in your faith with your family and life in general, these are videos to watch, okay? And today I want to share two words, two words that I believe are necessary to delve in and look at a little bit more closely. And those two words are appreciate and depreciate. Again, appreciate and depreciate. And I'll tell you now, because it's just who I am, I have been a note taker. I have always been a note taker. In high school, I was a note taker. One of my first jobs in college was a note taker for student support services, those who may be visually impaired or have some different learning abilities. Uh, I actually sat in the classroom as a student and documented their notes and was paid for that. They may still have that as a gig, okay, in higher education, but I did do that. And so I say that, I give that preface because I have notes. And I'm not going to come before you not having had prepared something unless it is just an urgency uh, that I believe the Lord has placed in my spirit to share. And I would just flow, right, with what I hear the Lord saying. Uh, but today we're going to look at two words, focus on two words, appreciate and depreciate. And so appreciate is defined as the ability to recognize the worth of something or someone. Appreciate has several synonyms, okay? Some of those synonyms are treasure, value, admire, respect, excuse me, and quality, okay? So appreciate, something that is full of worth. Appreciate also can be defined as uh, one who shows gratitude, okay? One who shows gratitude. I, I appreciate you taking time from your day to watch this video. I appreciate you for doing that. And, and I am hopeful that as you continue to watch, there is at least one nugget, if not more, for you to reflect and to ponder on and to apply it to your life. Appreciate, okay? Appreciate is 
something that is a necessity. But before I go there, I want to give the definition of depreciate. So depreciate is to lower in value, okay? Lower in value, period. Something that is full of worth no longer has as much worth or no worth because it has depreciated. It has downgraded. It has been reduced. It has been cheapen and it has been depressed. Yes, Ebony, you're using the word depressed when it comes to depreciate. I am because depressed means to lower the position of something. I know in a world filled with so much life that's going on around us right? Ongoing uh, pandemics, ongoing systems and strategies that aren't conducive to who God is. And there are so many people who are suffering from depression. They have been depressed. They have been placed in a lower position depress. Okay. And so their concept of their lives, their concept of a situation, their concept of the unknown has depressed. It has reduced. It has cheapened. It has downgraded their value or their confidence in something or someone. That's depression in action. And so when we look at the words appreciate and depreciate, what we come to find out very quickly is that they are opposites. They are polar opposites. Appreciate over here, depreciate, depreciate over here. They are opposites, okay? Left and right, up and down, day and night, okay? Day and night are the same with God, but you know what I mean. Day and night, opposites. Because when we even look at the word depreciate, a lot of times, we have become familiar with that word when it comes to purchasing vehicles. I don't care what the brand, the make, or the model is of a vehicle. Maserati, Bentley, Ford, Chevy, BMW, it doesn't matter. Cattle, it doesn't matter. When we drive vehicles off the lot, those vehicles depreciate in value. That means that if you purchase this vehicle for $100,000, if you ever decide to trade that vehicle in, when you go to trade it in, they are going to depreciate, reduce the value of the vehicle. Even if it's in very good condition, and there are times when you can get a really good return, right? A really good trade in value on a vehicle that has been well taken care of, the maintenance has been taken care of, the exterior and the interior have been well kept, most certainly. But overall, the car, the truck, the vehicle depreciates in value. And as a matter of fact, it, it is worth noting that the person who actually depreciates the vehicle is called a depreciator. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just like the person who depreciates, reduces your value, the system, the societal influence, the micro aggressions, those systems that have been placed in your life to depreciate you. 
I know that I am sharing this because yesterday, uh, our oldest son attended a football game and he plays football. Uh, mommy didn't want that. I, I am more of a baseball instrument, play your instrument. He's learning or does fairly well uh, with uh, keyboarding and, and playing the keyboard and, and things of that nature and the drums or whatever. I am the baseball mom, basketball mom, and I, I am forced to be the football mom. <laughs> And, and and that's okay. It, it is okay. But I do not like the impact, the intensity of those hits. I'm telling you, I probably would be the best, the best mom for flag football. But this is me. Ooh, that boy got hit really hard. Is he okay? That's me. That's me. Not even my son. Not even my son, but because I don't want any of those children, those young men out there to be injured. I'm like, oh, those hits are really hard while others are in the crowd and they're saying, yeah, ooh, ooh, that was a hard hit. Yep, yeah, go, go, go for it. Go, go, go for it. Yeah, that's not me. That is not me. That is not me. Okay. I am like, oh. Does he get up? Is he okay? Right? Um, that's me. And so I say that because last night during a game, it was the last game of the season for our oldest, and he was hit on the field. I guess the player hit him um, after he chased him down to make a sack. Anyway, our son... <laughs> He responded by hitting him back. I here I have video footage. I didn't know it was my boy out there, right? I saw flags and you can hear me flags just being thrown on the field by the officials. And so I'm I'm saying, "Oh my goodness." I I asked my husband, I said, "Oh my goodness." I said, "What are all those flags for?" And he's like, uh, I'm, I'm waiting for the call. <laughs> I'm waiting for the call. I said, oh, okay. And so I, I'm still recording. Mommy's multitasking, right? I'm still recording. And all of a sudden, I see our oldest walk off the field. His helmet is off. And I see his coach. And he's talking to him aggressively which we understand, especially in football, that there are times when the coaches lay in on those young men, okay? They really do. And so you can't be weak-minded um, and, and you can't be offensive. I get that, okay? And so the coach was going in on my son and he went in and then he walked away he came back and then he went in the crowd i mean the stand wasn't that i mean it wasn't that full um but he loudly and very clearly called my son a fool he said you're a fool you you you're a fool you are a fool you're a fool All right and so here I am, I said, now mommy is videoing, but I stopped videoing because of an interception that happened on the field. So I immediately set up from my bleacher chair, you know, the chairs that sit on the bleacher, and I, you know, kind of clutched my pearls, although I didn't have on any, you know, my ears began to perk up. And I said, we had some other family there, right? Um, and yeah, family. And, and they they turned around and I, cause they gave me a little look and I said, well, what, what is, what did he say? What did he say? And he, and they said, uh, the coach called your son a fool. I said, oh, here I go. Can you hear that? Have you ever heard, not nah, my baby? Have you ever heard that? <laughs> well, that's how I felt. I felt not 
my baby. And so, and I know he's a young man, but see what I don't, I don't approve of is him being called a name. Granted, the team was down 22 to six. We were already in the deficit. So what he did inaccurately on the field may have been a foolish play, but it doesn't make him a fool. See, those are two different things because now you are identifying his actions as you're not, pardon me, you are identifying him as a fool and not his actions. Because sometimes it doesn't matter who we are. We have all made mistakes on the field, off the field, in life, business meeting, report, schoolwork, data, analytics, musically, vocally, someone hasn't hit a note. Come on, we have all made some decisions or we've we've had some action, some oops, right? Some oops. So because I have a oops doesn't make me a dumb person because my data didn't line up with what your data is. It doesn't make me a, a dumb person. It doesn't make me a fool. It doesn't make you a fool because your perspective or your actions or you fell short just a little bit. It doesn't make you a fool. It makes your growth necessary in that area. Those are what I call opportunities for growth and we all have them. Because if we ever become stagnant, if we ever stop growing, if we ever stop maturing, then we are no good for ourselves, we are no good for the world, and we are no good for what and who God has called us to be, period. And so I became a little passionate, um, as a matter of fact. I mean, I calmly walked down because I was like, really? Is that what he said? I want to know. That's the mama in me. And so I walked down the bleachers, I went around, and I spoke to my son because he was right there on the sideline because the coach told him, said, take off your gear. You, you're not going back in the game. T take off your gear, right? And so he took it off with his little, he's so handsome to me, and I'm not biased. That's just a handsome young man, that chocolate skin, looking like his daddy. He's so handsome. And then not only that, his spirit, right? And so the spirit that is within him. He's anyone who knows him knows that he's a non-confrontational person and he, he tends to be a little reserved. Okay. Reserved. And so <clears throat> I walked on around and I said, Hey man, um, I whispered to him cause you know, some of the other players were around and I said, Hey, I said, mama missed it. I said, did your coach call you a fool? Did, did your coach, this is me, this is me. Did your coach call you a fool? And he said, mama, mama, he, he, he likes to do this with me. Mama, mama, it, it's no big deal, mama, mama. It, it is no big deal. And I said, all right. And I walked on calmly back to my seat. And so um, I'm talking to my husband and I said, well, he said it's no big deal. I said, but it's a big deal to me. I said, because had that been I, the entire season, this is the last game, their, their record isn't that stellar. The entire season, I have seen young men make horrible plays. I have seen that coach and other coaches call uh, uh, call plays that are unideal, that I hear fans and parents in the background or during the game saying, why is he calling that play? That is a stupid play, but never have I heard anyone call him stupid. My son's actions, he in high inside actually defended himself and around here, look, I, I mean, <laughs> listen, these young men are growing up and, and they have to understand how to take their stance appropriately. 
But I say that to say that we have to understand our worth. And the reason why I say that is because later on, when we picked him up from the game or the field, uh, we talked to him about the occurrence and he was like, mama, it's no big deal. Daddy, daddy. I mean, what? He he said it. And I mean, well, what's that going to do to me? It, it don't do anything to me. That's what he said. That was, that was his, his mentality. And I was saying, do you know what it says in Matthew? <laughs> I said, I'm going to repent on his behalf because calling someone a fool in Matthew, and I'm going to find it in Matthew, in Matthew, calling someone a fool is almost, almost there to... Hold on for a moment. I have to find it. I have to find it. Hold on. Hold on. It is in Matthew. And Proverbs has something too about calling someone a fool is equivalent uh, of of to murder and worthy of discipline by God, right? Because you have to guard your mouth and your tongue. There is life and death in the power of the tongue. But let me pull it up. I want to say it is, yeah, Matthew 5, 22. I couldn't get to it quick enough, but here it is. And I have it penciled or penned right here in my Bible, right there. I, I was already in Matthew. Well, I was reading about um, how God will, the kingdom is like a shepherd who will leave 99 sheep to find the one. But anyway, here's the, here's, can you see it? Okay, I have it pinned there, but let me read it. This is King James Version, okay? And it says, Matthew uh, 5, 22, and it reads, But I say unto you, that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment, and whosoever shall, shall say to his brother, Raka, or fool shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say, thou fool, you are a fool, mm -hmm. shall be in danger of hell fire. Now the Amplified version does have a different, a different Amplified, it reads differently of course, and the Message Bible. So the Message Bible reads, you're familiar with the command to the ancients, do not murder. I'm telling you that anyone who is so much as angry with a brother or sister is guilty of murder. Carelessly call a brother idiot or fool and you just might find yourself hauled into court or judgment. Thoughtlessly yelling stupid at a sister and you are on the brink of hell fire. The simple moral fact is that words kill. And so when we heard him say, I, I was pleased at the fact that it didn't puncture him, right? But sometimes, and I know this to be the fact, that some of our younger brown young men will try and hold in their true feelings, will try and submerge suppress or depress their own feelings because, you know, hey, 
I have to put on this, 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 hey, I'm good. And so while we are growing, uh, training, cultivating in our household, uh, alpha men, we are training up alpha men. They are alpha men in training. I believe my husband believes that it is necessary for these young men, men of valor, young men of valor in the making to be able to acknowledge their feelings and identify how you feel. And so I also thought as I, I focused on this well after midnight last night, there are so many systems in the world. And it is so, I like how the message Bible here captures that, that words do kill. That's why in the word, it declares that there is life and death in the power of the tongue. And so many times there are systems and there are mechanisms that are used in life that are there to depreciate us. And so I am here to remind you of your worth and that you appreciate in value. I'm not telling you to be high-minded. I'm not telling you to be full of pride. I'm not telling you to be braggadocious. That's not what I'm sharing with you. What I want you to know is that you are appreciating in value and you are appreciating in value when you are growing and maturing in God. Because as the song, Reckless Love of God, and as I was reading here uh, in Matthew, how the shepherd will leave a 99 sheep to find one sheep. If he started out with a hundred, if he started out with 100 sheep, he will leave the 99 sheep to find the one. And then when he finds the one, he rejoices because there's value in just that one. As a mother, I look at my son and I say, baby, there is value in you. And so I told him last night, I said, buddy, mommy wants you to get with the all due respect in your spirit. That's what I told him. I wanted him to say, mama, what I'm going to say to the coach? This is mama. What I mean, hey, I said, your response. Oh, I love that song. My response is hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're my, you're my redeemer. Okay. And so, yes, I wasn't telling him to have the response of hallelujah, but I was asking him to ponder and craft in his own unique way a response that is, um, with all due respect, sir, with all due respect, coach, I, my play, my actions might have been foolish, but I'm not a fool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because with all due respect, sir, right? Because if he, my son, begins to allow people to, to, to depreciate his value, right? And, and I understand football. And I, like I said, I understand that. But it is necessary for us to be able to identify... Because, and some of us are unaware, but there are some who are living under word curses. That's a word curse. See, I was, I was vocal when I was conversing with my husband. And then I began to bind that lie that he spoke over my son. My God, from whom all blessings flow. I began to subdue that and return it back to the sender. 
that's just like some of us in life. We may have had parents who were addicted to drugs or women or who were lazy, who didn't understand the value of working and earning an income and providing for the family. I've heard people say, you'll be just like your daddy. And it wasn't positive. Like I tell our children, oh, you're just like your daddy. You heard the context, the tone, it, it completely changed. Because they're dead. He, he, he provides. He loves the Lord. He's, he's not perfect. None of us are. But he is a good man. He's a good man for our home. He's, he's my man that the Lord has allowed me. Oh, it, I, okay. That's a whole nother. That's a whole nother video. But to say, pardon me. But to say, but to say, you fool, I had to turn that back in. I had to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, not to the coach, but in the spirit. Because some of us have lived under word curses. You'll never be nothing in life. You didn't even graduate from high school. You ain't worth nothing. Who you think you are? Hmm? You, 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 you just like them. Hmm? Hear me when I say, hear me when I say, those words have to be removed, hear me, from your spirit, period. Because we can't allow people to depreciate us, society to depreciate you, not at all. You have value, you have worth, and just like God, he, he loves us so much that he will leave the 99 sheep to find the one who strayed away up into the mountains who strayed away and kind of lost its path will go and find that one because of its value and bring it back to the full and rejoice over that one. And so I want you to understand your value. Know that you appreciate in value. Know that as you go on day by day and you repent, you seek the Lord, you place him first, you grow your faith, you exercise your faith. Work that. Work that faith. You got to work your faith. I've never seen my mama do it. But something in me tells me I can do it. I've never seen that done in my whole family. But something tells me I can do it. I've never, no one in my family has owned this. But something tells me that I can own it. I have never seen all of my family saved, sanctified, filled with Holy Spirit. But something tells me that they are bound to collide with God and he won't turn them loose and he and they won't turn him loose. So understand that you are valued, you are loved. And we aren't allowing the systems of this world to depreciate us. We aren't allowing people to depreciate us. We recognize our full worth. As a matter of fact, I have a shirt on today. I just, it was befitting. Queen, you are queen. You, yeah, come closer. Come, you are queen. And sir, you are a king. You. Yes, you are. And even if you are uh, a teenager, a teenager, a teenage young man, you are a king in the making. You're a prince. Mm -hmm. And you, young lady, you. Mm -hmm. you you're a princess. Yes? 
That's who you are. Mm -hmm. So remember that, that you are valued. You have to admire yourself, respect yourself. You are quality. I mean, there is a price for quality. Oh, yes, there is. So it is with appreciation that I thank you for taking time to listen to this video. And I am prayerful that you continue to recognize yourself as one who is valued, one who is full of worth. Until next time, I pray that you have a productive day filled with joy and purpose.